welcome to another episode of How Would I Paint That? Haikune Gardens. This uh, painting was sent to me by one of my students in my online course. And she said um, she was trying to paint this scene of, of a bridge with wisteria in the background. And um, she, she went off the rails. She said that um, she wanted to make the the wisteria the focus, but um, because she had included it in the the part the far away part of the painting, she was having trouble um, making it the focal point, and I'll explain that. And um, another complaint that she had of her painting was that she felt that it was it was instead of being light and airy, it was it felt very dreary, like a Grimm's fairy tale. And so let's talk about those things. Well, let's first look at the, um, the reference photo. I see that um, she made a good choice to make the wisteria the focal point. I'll talk about that, why, why I think that's a good idea. Um, the first thing I do when I look at, a, at a, a painting about how I'm gonna paint it is I try to decide what things are in light and what things are in shadow. And when I look at this, I don't see a lot of shadow. I see some under the bridge and uh, a little a uh, little along the creek. Um, you know, you can find a few bits under the wisteria or under a tree, but it, it doesn't really have a strong path of shadow through it. So, well, why is that? Well, let's look, what time of day is it? Where is the sun in this photo? It looks like it's directly overhead. And when that happens, there aren't really sh side shadows so much. There's shadows underneath things, but not these long uh, drawn out shadows that we really love and that you find in the early morning and in the evening or the late afternoon that make really great paintings. And so that's kind of why people don't, don't pick the middle of the day. Uh, so what can we do? We're gonna paint this anyway. Um, well, one thing we could do is sort of imagine that the sun, it's, it's right above, but it's slightly on the other side of, of the bridge. So that means the rails of the bridge that we can see are now in shadow. And this will make a nice path through, through the painting. And we're gonna kind of emphasize anything we think might be in shadow. We're gonna go ahead and throw that in there. The next thing that we do is um, we try to decide what color the light is. And I see that things in light are, uh, are, are yellow, and in particular, I see lemon yellow. When I look at those grasses, uh, I feel a lot of lemon yellow in there, which means that the shadows have the complement in them, which is violet or purple. And that is part of the reason why I think the wisteria will make such a great uh, focal point. Because, you know, that's purple. And if all the things in light are, have a tinge of lemon yellow, it's just gonna sing. So another thing that I do when I'm painting a landscape is I draw an Im imaginary line on, on the scene that I'm gonna paint. And I say to myself, everything beyond this line is far away. And that means to me that I'm gonna paint it with soft edges and uh, middle value, low contrast, uh, more neutral, not as warm as the colors closer to me. So I do all those things to make distance in the painting, which is, is the big deal about landscapes is you most of the time you're trying to create distance so um, what what my student decided to do in in her painting is she had included the wisteria in the far away and what that does is it makes it really hard to make it the focal point because you got to put some contrast and you got to put saturated color and you got to like you know, have a couple sharp edges to make a focal point. And if it's in the distance, that's a lot harder to do. So that would be the first change I would make in my approach is to make the far away begin after 
the wisteria and the wisteria would be in the middle ground. Um, the other um, complaint that she had, and I'll just mention, is you know she felt that the that the painting was um, dark and sinister or dreary, and um, that's that's partly because we don't have the sense of light in it. We have to get more of the yellow in there, which we can see in the photograph, and we have to keep it light value so we can feel the light in this scene. Looking back at the painting that um, my student did, let's see where, let's analyze where our eye is going in this. Well, I, first thing I find is that my eye goes to the, the post at the end of the, of, of the bridge. And that's because the, we've got some really strong lines of the bridge that end up at the, uh, at the post, and there's a lot of contrast there. So um, since we didn't pick that as the focus, we would de-emphasize that by um, lowering the contrast there and maybe not making the, the lines of the bridge as strong or connected or sharp. We would, we would knock all that down so that that doesn't end up being um, an eye magnet, you know. And then uh, the other place my eye goes is to the rocks around uh, in the very lower left corner. And it's because they, they have a really dark perimeter around them and, uh, and light in the middle. So it's sort of, it's got the high contrast and it's got a kind of a landlocked shape. Like when your eye goes inside of it, you can't get it back out. So what would I do about that? I would, um, looking back at the reference photo, I can see that the light is shining on those rocks, just like it's shining on the, the irises and on the creek and uh, the other plants. So I would see it as a light value that I can move freely from that shape into the other shapes and travel around the painting. So I'd get rid of the dark perimeter. And the other thing that I think would have to happen in this painting is because the bridge is such a strong um, element in there, we're gonna have to, you know, give a, a better uh, idea of the way of it's drawn. So I would look for these main lines. There's a line by the, um, the boards of the bridge that you walk on. There's another line that you see from the handrail that's close to you, a line from the handrail on the other side of you, a little further back. There's the post at the end when you get back off the bridge and a post for the other handrail. So we look at how these lines compare to each other. Do they cross? Um, do they cross each other? How much? Where? And um, we notice too where the middle post is. The middle post on the bridge will be the highest point in the arc of the bridge. And then the amount of bridge to one side will be roughly equivalent to the amount of bridge on the other side of that high point. So those are the kind of basic drawing things that we'll try to get. Here is what it would look like if I made these changes. If you enjoyed this uh, painting lesson, give it a like, subscribe please, and see you on the next one. Happy painting.